So as we stand today and, and have dialogue today here, contemplating the immense and everlasting importance of promoting and supporting universal human rights, we must also ask ourselves, as was just charged of us, what are we willing to do to ensure the recognition and upholding of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family? In 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt posed a similar challenge while delivering his State of the Union address to the 77th Congress of the United States. In an effort to rouse an inward-looking nation bent on remaining neutral, while, as he said, the democratic way of life was being directly assailed in every part of the world, President Roosevelt presented a, a vision of a world founded upon four essential human freedoms. And you know them. Freedom of speech and expression. Freedom for every person to worship God in their own way. Freedom from want and freedom from fear. He did not believe this to be a vision of the distant future, but rather a world attainable, as he said, in our time. A goal worth fighting and sacrificing for, not tomorrow, but today. Now, I'm going to be very bold in front of Paul uh, Sparrow uh, and say that I am... Um, uh, I often agree wholeheartedly with the wise and wonderful words of President Roosevelt. In this case, the freedoms he expounded remain foundational and elemental to this very day. But I do disagree that his vision of a world founded upon those freedoms was attainable in any lifetime, because they are always under threat, attack, and challenge from those bent on oppressing others. Now, it's, I don't disagree because, uh, not because the victory of the Allies in World War II nor the subsequent march of progress did not vastly improve the well-being of millions, but because, as we know, a world where those freedoms, those four freedoms and the many other rights enumerated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are forever upheld is not something that can simply be attained. As the effort, as we know, and sadly experience even in our country today has no end. It is eternal and ongoing. It is a struggle between the bright gleaming side of humanity and its dark recesses. And today in the United States of America we know sadly what those dark recesses look like and they must be confronted in the small places of America. The fight for human rights didn't end with the victory in Europe or Japan, though those victories did free millions from fear and oppression. The battle continued and continues every day across the globe as the flames of anger, hate, and oppression still burn and the cruelties of autocratic regimes persist. The global fight for universal human rights deserves our attention, our action, and our commitment. However, the cause also needs examples, models to hold up, and show the world, our nation, our state, our community, and our families. And that's why it's more critical than ever to never forget the battle also continues in, as Eleanor Roosevelt so eloquently put it, the small places, our neighborhoods, our schools, and our places of work, and our homes. The world of the individual person, as she said, and that is the work in Dutchess County, not only of the Human Rights Commission, but of all of us, all of us. It is in these places that I believe Mrs. Roosevelt thought we could all have our greatest and most immediate impact on the effort to protect, promote, and ensure the rights to equal justice, equal opportunity, equal dignity, without discrimination. As she said, unless these rights have meaning, there in the small places. They have limited meaning anywhere. Without concerned action to uphold them close to home, we shall look in vain for progress in the larger world. These words are essential today. The toxicity and tumult of larger arenas have left many feeling powerless, but change starts from the bottom up. It may be for in, in the fighting for a disabled child's right to an ed education at a local school board meeting. 
as articulated in Article 26 of the Universal Declaration. Everyone, everyone has the right to education and that such education shall be di directed to the full development of the human personality. It may be speaking out against dangerous language no matter who speaks it or acts meant to limit an individual's right to practice their religion. Article 18, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Or it simply may be treating each neighbor, classmate, co-worker, or stranger with dignity and warmth. Article 1, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and in rights. They are endowed with reason, conscience, and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. These may each seem as small acts, but it is the small acts in the small places which spur the wheels of change and move forward an eternal quest for universal human rights. Ahead of us, the days, weeks, and months, and years to come, remains the persistent struggle for human rights. We should remember and take heart from the words of the president who lived here in this community. That freedom means the supremacy of human rights everywhere. Our support goes to those who struggle to gain those rights and keep them. Our strength is in our unity of purpose. And let me say that again. Our strength is in our unity of purpose. And to that high concept, there can be no end save victory. Thank you for being here. It is in the small places of our homes and in our communities where we will continue, continue to ensure that those who speak with hate, those who choose violence, and those who believe oppression is appropriate will continue to be challenged. And it is through these conversations we will continue to find within each other our shared humanity in the hope to celebrate the dignity of every life and protect the rights of every citizen. Thank you very much.